Hi, I'm Will Stark, Managing Director of Private Wealth Services here at Howard Capital Management. I am here today with Vance Howard, our CEO and Portfolio Manager, and we are going to take you through this week's Wealth Watch. Thank you, Will. I know we've had a lot of questions, and you've had a lot of questions from our high net worth clients and our clients around the country and around the world who have our mutual funds or ETFs and our managed accounts. A lot of different questions out there, and you and I have a lot of different dialogues, especially about the news media. And you and I talk about this a lot, and I've been preaching it for the past 25 years, turn off the news. Don't The Wall Street Journal, New York Times, CNN, uh, Fox News, it doesn't matter. Turn them off. It's gotten to the point it's not even realistic. It's a point it's almost propaganda. Hmm. So it's really killing people's returns. It's frightening people. And we really need to analyze and dig deep as to what's happening, Will, why we're trading the way we are, why the buy line turned positive nine weeks ago as we re-entered 100% in the market nine weeks ago, and why the buy line turned positive. Let's take a real close look at that. Biggest thing out there, Will, as you will, is deaths. How many people are actually dying now from, 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 from the virus? And I think this is very, very critical. Look at how, what's going on here. Look at how, what is this telling us? Let me move back to, 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 red, to black here. As you come back down, what's happening with deaths are going down. What's the market doing? Hmm. It's going inverse. It's going straight back up. 92% off its peak. We're down to 213 people have passed away over, over the past day or so. That's out of almost 300, what, 28 million people? Yeah. 200 people have died of the, the corona. So deaths have dr dramatically dropped. This is tr this is really affecting the market. Yeah. Now, this is one reason that you and I, we talk about this math, math, math. Get the emotion out of the equation. Talk about math. Because this is what's happening, and the market's going the opposite direction. It's telling us what's going to happen. Let's go a little bit deeper. Well, look at what's going on. We've heard a lot about Houston, right? Hmm. Yeah. And um, I know you've gotten a lot of emails on Houston. We're, we, have a, we have a house in Houston, too. But we think that Houston's actually starting to peak and roll over. Again, Los Angeles, we think, is rolling over, too. If you look at the correlation between what happened in New York and what happened in, in, in Houston, they're about the same. They've kind of run up, they've peaked, now they're, they've run their course. Yeah. Herd immunity may be taking place in some of these different uh, parts of the country, like New York City. Herd immunity, in all probability, has taken place in, in New York City. Yeah. We'll have to see. But you've got to do your own research, and you've got to dig deep, and you've got to look at places like the state website. John Hopkins is doing some good research. Stanford's doing good re research. The CDC is doing pretty good research. These are the things that you've got to look for. You can't just look at the, the, the news media because it, it would actually just scare yeah. you to death. Well, I think that's the key, too, is actually looking at those unbiased sources and not getting it from a you know consolidated framework there. That's right. I know when we do a lot of research, I, I, I'd scrap the news media. I'd go exactly to the sources. I'd get the real data and start correlating your data on how it's affecting people. Yep. And again, here's daily deaths in Houston. They started to drop. By the way, yesterday there was zero that's zero deaths in Houston. Wow. Row. Now, we've heard a lot about it in the news. I mean, you read the news in the New York Times, like this great spike, and well, they had zero deaths yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I've also talked to three of my physician friends and two, new two nurses out there. Hospitals aren't packed. Yeah. They're just not. Yeah. So do your homework. And again, Phoenix is starting to roll over. Now, let's look at these. Why do you think California, Arizona, Texas, and Florida's had a run-up in cases? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Well, it's on the border. What if, what is it, especially Arizona, uh, mm -hmm. California, and Texas? What have they experienced? They're seeing a lot of uh, the illegal immigration has come across. That they're carrying the virus with them. We've seen a spike down there in those border border towns. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons you're seeing a spike down there in the south, and up towards California. Now here's your daily cases again down at the Texas Medical Center. They're doing good work down there. A lot of great research. You can see how, the, how it's starting to peak. It's starting to roll over. The market's going to start to go back up as, as people feel more and more. Or, or, or less afraid of what's going on yeah. with the virus. And you and I have been out here in Atlanta. I've been out in Texas. Um, is it is it is it packed at restaurants? No, but there's sure a lot of people in there. Yeah. And they're starting to come out each and every day, more and more and more. Oh yeah, well they want to start to reopen too. They they do, and they're, they're going to really have do. to. And and you know one of the things that you and I've talked about, and that we we really tried to analyze, is anytime you have you you have a sickness, yeah. and you have a, have a medication that's supposed to cure that sickness, there's always side effects to that medication. Well, when we shut down the economy, we shut down the, the country, we shut down businesses, what was the side effect? Was it worth the medicine we took or not? And these are the questions we're going to know one of these days. And we're not going to know a year off. We're going to probably know a couple couple three months off whether it was worth yeah. the, uh, the medication that we took. Yeah. In other words, from failing businesses, the economy shutting down, depression, massive depression. We've had domestic abuse has really gone through the roof. Mm. Um, people are, are losing their homes, they're losing their businesses. We've had massive riots. Yeah. You know, so this is correlated. Yeah. A lot of this is correlated. Well, and speaking of correlation, one thing I noticed on this chart here 
is that you've got basically the market drawdown follows inverse to the, the cases, the spikes. Yes. And then even, even in the consolidation here, you see the same thing in the markets yes. as we're going over the past three or four weeks. That's right. So and, and, yeah. and, and you can see zero deaths Houston, markets up today heavily. Yeah. And, and well, I'm just using Houston as a, as a base point. Hmm. And then come back here and look at this, Will. You and I were talking about this slide earlier that we look, look, testing has gone straight up, but look what's going on with the, uh, the seven day trend percentage of positive. Hmm. Positive cases are dramatically dropping even though testing is going up. The current status, this is from the uh, Texas Medical Center, zero days of positive average growth, test positive trend. Hmm. This is what we want to see. This is what we want to see. And those are hard facts too. Yes. That's when you start to data mine. Yeah. That's when you really start to data mine and you start to game the market with numbers. And let's go look at this. Okay, again, trending down. Deaths are trending down. People, you know, well, yeah, people are getting sick from it, but hospitalizations are going down, deaths are going down. Okay, let's look at this. This is really, let's go back into the market. Let's see how this is really impacting our money. When you look at hotel volume, this is as of a couple, of, this is about a week and a half, two weeks ago. Look at this. Leisure and family up 82%, leisure non-family up 50. Here was your baseline before Corona took place, the drop as we start to recover. You can call it a U-shaped recovery, yeah. but it's going to be pretty much more like a V. Yeah, almost almost akin to a Nike swoosh. Yes. Would. And again, let, let you hear me talk about this. What, what do I always talk about? <laughs> cash buildup. Yeah. Cash buildup. When cash builds up on, on the sidelines, it's got to be deployed sooner or later. It's going to come back into the market. It's going to push market prices higher. Yeah. You know, we went back in the market, what, nine weeks ago? Mm -hmm. So what's happening now is it's pushing all those nice buys that we made nine yeah. weeks ago just higher and higher and higher. Look at this. There was the peak back in 08. And everybody remembers the 08 crash. Cash went all the way down. Mm -hmm. Then you've seen the market rally all the way back up for the past 10 or 11 years. As all that cash is set on the sideline and back into the market. Yeah. This is record levels of cash, Will. Mm -hmm. Record levels of cash sitting on the sideline today. Nowhere in history have we had that much cash sitting on the sideline. What's going to happen? It's going to come back into the market. The market's going to continue to go up. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's one thing that, that struck me about the amount of cash in the market right now, or out of the market for that in fact. But with the amount of growth that we've had thus far, you know, people are saying that some of it may be unsustainable. But to me, with almost $5 trillion in cash, that's still a heck of a lot of dry powder to deploy into the equity market. That's a tremendous amount of dry powder. And by the way, that powder has barely come down. Hmm. Barely come down. And again, let's look at this. Here you go, your institutional money market, 08. Here we are now. Look at that. I mean, there's so much cash on the sidelines, it's absolutely amazing. And as the market starts to go up, what happens with investors? Yeah. You have a thing called FOMO. What is that? Fear of missing out. Fear of missing out. Then what do they do? They want to come, rock, come, pushing the market, come back into the market strong, pushing our prices higher and higher. It's great fun. It's great fun. But this is, this is really interesting, Will. We look at this, and you and I were talking about this, on how many more flights are taking place. Mm. Here, here's back before the virus took. We had about uh, 2.1 million, million flights per day. The, the, uh, the bottom of the, of the corona, 87,000. Look at where we're at. Now, this is as of 622. We're almost up to 600,000 flights back. We're right back here on the trend line. If we keep going at this trajectory, and this is going to kind of sound crazy, we're talking August. We're talking two months. Yeah. We could be pushing back to where we were. Yeah. That's an amazing thing. You know, 37% in 12 days on that, on that trend line, pushing back into yeah. travel. This economy is going to shoot straight back up. Oh, yeah. Too much cash on the sidelines. Deaths are dropping dramatically. Mm -hmm. uh, vaccine uh, news is promising and, mm -hmm. and, and looking uh, like it could happen in the next, I don't know, six, eight months, whatever the case may be, maybe so, we'll see. Yeah. But things are looking up quite a bit. Well, and even as an anecdotal example, uh, on, the, on the flights there, I mean, I've got, you know, a friend that was been traveling over the past month, specifically through Hartsfield Jackson, and he was saying that over the last two weeks, he's actually had to wait in a line, which has not been the case. Yes. Uh, yeah. And it's just, uh, it's great news. You know, you normally don't hope yeah. to wait in lines, but... It's a good case for us. And we're seeing a waiting lines and we're seeing the economy start to stair step up at a pretty rapid pace. Yeah. In correlation with one another. Absolutely. Now let's go back and let's take a look at the market wheel. This is why you don't want to sit through bear markets. That right there, that right there. But what happened? We had that big cash build up in 08. We had this long, long run up, right? Mm -hmm. Then you had another cash build up right here. And then you've had this massive run up here. 
we've got record, record cash on the sidelines, ready to come back in. And it's starting to move that direction pretty rapid quick. quick. And again, the buy line went positive way down here. What was that nine weeks ago? Yep. As we start to come back into the market, the market's clearly positive. The buy line's clearly positive. And you can see the difference where the, where the buy line's might have moved to push us back into the market mathematically, non emotionally, taking the emotion out of the equation. If you look at what the news media is, is, is telling everybody, gosh, you'd be scared to death to walk out of your house. Yeah. But that's not what the market's saying. Yeah. It's not what people are doing. It's not what actually is happening. That's why we've got to trade in the now. We can't, we can't guess what's going to happen tomorrow. We can't worry about what happened yesterday. Right this minute, the buy line's positive. The buy line's positive. We should be 100% invested, which we are. Well, that actually brings up a good point. Can you go back to that last slide there? Sure. So something that I've noticed, and I've gotten a lot of questions on recently, um, is you know, these last two recessions, you know, they were pretty drawn out, uh, relatively speaking. So you know, anywhere between two and three years. But the most recent big drawdowns back in 18 and March of this year the velocity was so much swifter. And so I get this question a lot specifically from, you know, advisors that are maybe using multiple managers and they say, does an asset allocator or non-math based manager have a fair, you know, chance of success in today's market just with how quickly things are moving? Well, you, you know, as well as I do that we're not trading against one another anymore. Yeah. We're trading against computers. Computers dominate the market anymore. So if you're not trading with a computer or math driven, you're really behind the curve. Yeah. And so these asset allocators are just getting beat to death. Number two, you know, as the market's starting to come back, different segments of the market are coming back much faster, and some of them aren't coming back at all. Yeah. High dividend paying stocks, value stocks, they're hardly moving. Some of them are down 15, 18% right now as we speak, as yeah. the market's starting to get back to even. Mm -hmm. Uncomfortable. You don't want to sit there. Math needs to push you, put you in the area where it's the most productive asset class to maximize the returns. If you're going to take the risk, make the cash register ring. Yeah. That's the way it should be. Yeah. And again, we'll close up here. We did send out the 401k optimizer. Again, your allocation is going to be a, maxed out on equities. It has been for nine weeks, if that should be allocation, if you know what's balanced, conservative, et cetera. Hmm. TSP with our government folks went out. And then, Will, why don't you give us some exciting news here on, as we close out? Yeah, so we had our two uh, Howard Defender ETFs uh, that went live uh, last October. And today, we're actually going to be featured on CNBC um, for a, a virtual closing of the bell. Um, at the end of today's session. Uh, and so we're hoping for some continued positivity uh, in the intraday session, but uh, look out for us on CNBC later today. Yeah, and, and hopefully by 2021, we'll actually be there live yeah. in the New York Stock Exchange, <laughs> but we are closing the bell today at, at the NYSE in New York uh, virtually because of the corona. And yeah. again, thank you, Will. Thank you, Vince. And again, he's a, he, he runs, a, he's a managing director of our private wealth service. He also works very much in, in tune with our tax strategists on, mm -hmm. on those two issues. So That's thank right. you, Will. Yeah. Thank you, Vince. Good luck. Stay safe.